everyone, welcome back to the NFA Review Channel. Today we're going to take a look at the Magnum Research Desert Eagle chambered in 50 AE, as well as the L5 version, which is a lightweight aluminum version with a 5 inch barrel, compensated, chambered in 357 Magnum. Many of you remember when I uh, had a hotel room interview at SHOT Show with Freedom Munitions about their new big grains cartridge that they loaded, which is why this video became to be. I didn't want to put another video out there of somebody, sh or me, shooting watermelons with the 50AE and, and trying to test how many concrete blocks it can shoot through. Yes, it's a 325 grain round, it's a magnum round, it's high energy, we know it's going to go through a lot of things. Those of you out there that actually want to own and enjoy this firearm will only do so if it doesn't break the bank to shoot it. Well, that's exactly what Freedom Munitions achieved here. I think they got this round down about a dollar twenty a round, which is extremely cheap compared to what this round has always cost. When I reached out to Magnum Research, I said, "Hey, why don't you send the lightweight L5 version too, so we can compare the recoil impulse and shootability of the 357 and the lightweight frame with the full McCoy here, the real McCoy and 50 AE with the steel frame." Um, I have not shot a lot of rounds out of these guns yet. I've put about a mag through each one. They ran flawlessly. I can already say that 357 shoots like a dream, but there is just something about releasing this Magnum round out of this 50AE six inch barrel. Let's cover a little bit of history on the Desert Eagle. Now this is not a new gun, as many of you know. This gun has been around since the 80s. 1983 is when the uh, patent was filed. So this gun has been around for as long as I've been walking this this earth. And it's a very iconic gun. I mean, just the silhouette of this gun uh, is just as recognizable as a silhouette as a Beretta M9, a 1911, a Glock 17. When this pops up on the screen, you know what it is. And speaking of the screen, this thing's been on the silver screen over 500 times. This thing has been a lot of cameos and a lot of major motion pictures. And the fact that I've got Desert Eagle, point five out. Written on the side of mine. And let's just face it, it's a Magnum cartridge and a handgun. And many of you are asking, you know, why did they develop this gun in the first place? Well, you gotta remember back in the 80s, it was kind of not the car world's race for horsepower, but it was the firearm market's race to Magnum loadings. Well, those loadings back then were restricted to revolvers. So they set out to develop a firearm specifically for shooting Magnum loadings. And that's why this comes in 50AE, 44 Magnum, and 357 Magnum. The 50AE version that I have here has a six inch barrel, an overall length of 10.75 inches, a height of 6.25 inches, and a weight of four pounds, 5.8 ounces. That's a lot of weight, but you need it to soak up that Magnum loading. Compare that to the new L5 357 that I have here. This one has a five inch barrel, an overall length of 9.69 inches. Uh, it's the same height at 6.25 inches, but the weight is only three pounds, 1.6 ounces, which actually still sounds really heavy, but I'm telling you, when you put these things in each hand, this one feels as light as a feather. The slide width is the same on both at 1.25 inches, so it's definitely a wide gun, although the grip section is uh, perfect for, for somebody like me. I have medium-sized hands, so a lot of you shouldn't have a problem with this gun. Okay, we all get it. They're big guns and they shoot a big round, but do you know how they operate? Well, this is a gas-operated handgun. This does not operate like your normal, typical, uh, recoil operated handguns that you're used to every day. This operates much like the AR-15 many of you are used to. So let's use a rotating locking bolt head that interfaces with the chamber here and actually has a gas hole at the bottom of the barrel on the first land of rifling right where the head of the bullet seats. When you shoot the gun, gas goes through the front of the barrel traveling forward, goes down and there's another chamber here where it interacts with this cam. When it hits that cam, the actual entire slide acts like a bolt carrier, carrying the slide back, compressing two recoil uh, springs on either side, 
the round's ejected. It comes forward under the tension of the recoil spring, stripping around off the magazine, inserting around up into the chamber, and locking the locking lugs. So, yes, it's awesome. And they had to do that to absorb all the energy of a caliber as big as the 50 Action Express. So, pretty neat that this gun's been around since the 80s, and it's still relevant today. Much like some of the other guns I've been reviewing lately, it is definitely an iconic pistol. Now, as far as the finish on the 50 that they sent for the review, this one has their WMD finish, so it kind of has like a, like a worn, post-apocalyptic world look. Um, these are not the grips that came on it. These are just plain rubber grips. I actually like the way they feel better. It did have some beautiful green hogs on it. Um, I just uh, I didn't care for them, so I switched them out. Now, this is your iconic look here. It has the Picatinny rail on top. Now, what they did with the L5, the 357, is other than omitting the steel frame and replacing with an aluminum frame, the shorter barrel definitely gives this a more proportional look, and the built-in compensator helps with recoil management as well. I mean, this gun barely moved in my hand. I went from shooting the 50 to this the other day, and I was bracing really hard, and then when it came time to shoot, I was like, oh, that's it. Other features that this gun has is uh, the fluting along the barrel on the 357 version only to help lighten it, as well as this cutout on the slide for lightening as well. Picatinny rail on top, and it has the same operation. Now, interesting feature with the Desert Eagles, the Mark 19s, is that a caliber swap is very easily achieved in seconds with the 44 and 50 AE version. You can also do a caliber swap from 50 down to 357, but it requires changing the bolt head out. Now, if I had a 44 here, which I don't today, the only thing that's required you to do for a caliber swap is take off the barrel, like so, putting on the 44 barrel, like so, and switching the magazine with a 44 caliber magazine. That's it. Pop off barrel, put on new barrel, switch magazine. You have a completely new caliber. It uses the same bolt head for the 44 as it does the 50 AE. So if I decide to keep this gun and purchase it from them, I'm probably going to buy the 44 kit because I bet you it's a really sweet shooter. Field strip and maintenance of the Desert Eagle is really straightforward and simple. Those of you that have any time taking apart a Beretta are going to be really familiar with the process. Going to want to remove the magazine and ensure that the firearm's unloaded, which it is. Lock the firearm to the rear. Push the button in on the side, on the left side, while rotating the lever down on the right side. The barrel simply comes out, and then you can remove the slide forward and the dual recoil rod assemblies will come out the front. All right, once you have the frame and the slide and the bore clean, it's like any other firearm, lube the rails and re reassemble it in the reverse order that you took it apart. All right, guys, let's go hit the range with these bad boys. We're gonna be shooting uh, 125 grain and 158 grain uh, Freedom Munitions out of the 357 and the 325 grain Freedom Munitions out of the 50 AE. We're not going to do anything silly today like shoot watermelons or cinder blocks. Let's see, let's see what the recoil impulse is compared to the, from the 357 with the comp to the 50 AE and then maybe see how each gun does at 21 feet and then uh, we'll push things back out to 100 see if we can still hit the steel at 100 yards away because you know some of you might be using this for hunting as well. Let's get to it. All right, let's do a quick function test here. Three rounds of the Freedom Munitions 357. Breaking it in still, breaking it in. All right, let's do a little function test with the big fitty. Got seven rounds loaded of the 325 grain, big grains. I highly recommend gloves. All right, I'm gonna do my best not to limp wrist this bad boy. Yeah, mama.
and nailed that plate at 100. We're about 110 yards away, and it rocked its world. Well, that ammo feeds reliably, and it's only a buck 20 around. Ouch. All right, we know it functions with the 325 grain big grains, but uh, let's see what I'm capable of at 100 yards. I already know at 100 yards the front sight blade completely obscures the shoot steel silhouette. I can't see my misses because we have old telephone poles down there as a backstop. Uh, the property owner where I'm at right now, I'm going to film here a lot more, as uh, he's going to bring in some uh, dirt. But for now, if I miss, I can't see any splash. So I'm going to try to hold just over the head. Let's see what that does. Five rounds, here we go. This thing can create master flinches, man. Wow. Mega flinch machine. Let's go, hold a little high here. Okay, I didn't hit the steel, uh, but let's just face it, <laughs> if somebody is shooting a fireball maker at you, you're not going to stick around to find out whether or not they're going to hit you at 100 yards. Um, as far as hunting, you're definitely going to want to take your time and practice with this thing. Let's see how, uh, how much easier this becomes at 50 yards. Woo, slow down. Eh, two out of five ain't bad. It's freaking blazing hot out here. And this thing is rocking my world. All right guys, I'm up at uh, about 25 yards now. I should be able to get a five out of five. Wow, God, that has a lot of energy transferring to this thing. Holy cow, it even, it moved the entire target stand back in the sand. You know what I think we should do? I think we should shoot Mr. Rubber Dummy point blank in the face, just to see what it does. All right, let's wrap this up. Let's, uh, I topped the magazine all the way up. We got seven plus one in the chamber. Let's see how fast I can shoot the rubber dummy without destroying my camera. Whew. Woo! Good Lord. God, I love this gun. There's just something about shooting something that powerful. It's addicting. Who's gonna complain about shooting a 50 AE all day? Not this guy. This gun was a absolute blast to shoot. The 357 Magnum, very soft shooting gun. We had some problems with it today, so you didn't get to see a lot of it. Uh, I reviewed some of the high speed footage and the ammo from Freedom Munitions is loaded hot enough. The shells are ejecting just fine. I don't know if it's a, uh, spring issue in the magazine or whatever but sometimes things like this happen it's a brand new gun probably needs to be broken in a little bit more I'm gonna contact Magnum Research they'll probably want the gun back so they can take a look at it nothing's perfect I have no doubt in my mind they're gonna send the gun back and it's gonna run hundred uh, percent the 50 again I shot hmm, on and off camera probably a hundred rounds through it today maybe a little bit more not a single malfunction I had a couple uh, times where the slide failed to lock back. Not a big deal. I was probably riding the slide stop or something because uh, your hands bounce around quite a bit. But that's pretty impressive of a gun of this size. And people complain a lot about this gun running, let alone this one, and it ran just fine. 
Uh, so again, I hope you enjoyed the video. I have a lot more reviews coming for you guys, so click that like and subscribe button, and I'll see you next time. NFA review channel. <laughs> <laughs> You're a dork. I was beat to his 50 cal. <laughs> I can't even focus. I want to hit that rubber dummy target. <laughs> okay. I think the heat's gotten to you. <laughs> Is it on? Yep. Turd. <laughs> Oh, I have no magazine. Stand by. Okay, I'm shooting a little fast. You know, I could have hit it every time. It's just like there's something this gun does to you. It just it makes you want to get rid of all the rounds in here as quickly as possible so it's over. But uh, let's go ahead and try that again.